Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing some mail which has been sent in recently. This parcel right here comes from a viewer from Montreal named Gerald Raté. Uh, he's been uh, watching the channel for quite a while and told me that he sent something, so I went down to the post office and lo and behold, there it was. So let's see what it is. Some bush light. Dear Harrison, I'm happy to send you some wonderful HO scale stuff. There is one box that is facing down. Please open it last. A surprise awaits. I sent you a rubber band engine, a flat car that goes with it. You may have to change the bands. There are at least two screws on the sides of the trucks. Be careful not to lose the plastic bushing inside each hole. Also some passenger cars. You will love to see them with one engine in particular, all of them or either blue box kits, have fun building them. Since you've got me back into this awesome hobby, keep the great videos coming. Sincerely yours, Gerald Raté. So, here's sent a whole variety of stuff. Let's get this open here. So I guess there's a box at the bottom here which is facing down. That's the one we'll open last, but for now, we'll uh, check out all these. We've got a uh, wonderful Rio Grand car with knuckle couplers and metal wheels. Oh, very cool, an Amtrak uh, passenger car kit. Oh, no way, so this is what he was talking about. It's an Atherin Hustler, and this one is from the DNRGW railway. I'm not super familiar with that. The bands look to be in really good shape. Overall, a very nice looking locomotive. I really like the, uh, the Hustlers, so we'll definitely have to uh, test that one out. I think this is another passenger car. Indeed it is. A third passenger car. And this one's uh, some kind of a baggage car. A fourth passenger car. And uh, it's a dome car. There go the couplers. <laughs> My goodness, another one. Unbelievable. And finally, the surprise. And it's a vintage Hershey's car. How cool. Check it out. So for any of you that don't know, I've been building a Hershey factory for quite a long time. It should be complete, I think within the next couple months. I've got it like 90% there. Uh, but it appears uh, Gerald has gone on and uh, sent a uh, Hershey's boxcar to go with it. Uh, a couple other viewers have uh, sent in these boxcars as well. So uh, I think I'm going to have uh, an entire train for that factory. Uh, it's just uh, wild. A few of them need uh, restoration. But this one's in perfect condition. So thank you so much for sending all this stuff. Uh, it's ridiculously generous. I really can't wait to build all those Amtrak passenger cars. I think they are going to be a terrific addition to the collection with uh, all my Amtrak locomotives. So a huge thanks goes out to Gerald Rete for sending all this stuff. We're going to test this out later, but first there is another parcel which I want to open up. This one uh, comes from uh, another longtime viewer, possibly I think one of the first 50 subscribers of this channel. His name's uh, Pete Monster 62 and uh, he said he was sending something, although he didn't say what it is, so we'll find out. Dear SMT, I've enclosed in this box some items that will help you build and maintain your model railroad. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Boxing Day, and a Happy New Year. Sincerely, Pete Monster 62 Well, let's find out what exactly is in here. Look at this, everything's all individually wrapped. It looks like Christmas has like come early here. Let's have a look at everything. Try these for applying glue and cement. And we've got a whole bunch of toothpicks. SMT's narrow gauge.
And it appears to be a uh, N-Scale Union Pacific uh, boxcar, possibly with a brass frame. Look at that. SMT's roundhouse. I could be mistaken. I think this is some sort of a, uh, a flat car. We got some uh, Tyco horn hook couplers, some uh, more Tyco parts. Uh, we got, I think, some different adhesives. Oh, very cool. This would have been, uh, I think, part of the displays Tyco used to have. A whole bunch of different wheels and stuff. So a whole bunch of uh, different parts and supplies. That's very handy. At the bottom here, yeah, we got a railroading magazine of some sort. Vintage timetables from Canadian National. So I think these highlight some of the different routes all the railroads used to have at one time. I'd be curious to know how many of them are uh, still in use. SMT's lunchbox. This I think is the last thing in here. It's a whatchamacallit. I have never had one of these before. I mentioned that uh, in a previous video. And a Heath bar. Well, thank you so much, uh, Pete Monster 62 for uh, sending all these various maintenance items. They will not go to waste. I think a lot of them are going to come in handy with uh, all sorts of different projects. So it's very generous of you. Thanks a bunch for all of that. And now we've got a box from Waterloo, Ontario. I know it looks like it's already been opened, but that's just because uh, it was all uh, wrapped up in paper when I got it. And there were a lot of addresses, so when I ripped that off, it also took the tape. So this is my first time uh, having a look inside here. Now, I don't know if there's a letter, but there does appear to be a lot of different things inside this box. Let's see if we can find something here. Harrison, I sent you a few items that I hope you'll like and can use. There are a few items that have been piling around that I'll never get back to finishing, plus a few items. A Athern Blue Box, two SD45 shells, a Santa Fe, and a Southern Pacific. Sorry, no chassis. Maybe you'll have one. A Shea engine that is damaged, and an SD35 from Mahano for the President's Choice train sets. Again, missing the handrails, but it runs good. Uh, the best are a FA plus B units that I painted in the Sioux line paint scheme. These were Bachman units that I started to convert to DCC, but put them away to build our layout. They run great together and have lots of power. I only started to wire the B units for DCC, so that's all you'll need to repair. I spent about three hours looking for all the pieces I took off, all the screws, and luckily I found them. It would be great to see you get them back together and running. The picture was a guide for how I painted the details on. Anyway, have fun with them. Cheers, Corey uh, Woodmore? I'm sorry, uh, Woodmire, I think it is. Uh, P.S. The F.A. and B. units, uh, the frames are loose. All right, well, um, I certainly was not expecting something quite so uh, extravagant. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things. We seem to have a Bachman railway crossing. I'm not sure if this has working lights on it, but uh, it definitely does appear to have some mechanical details. So that looks really interesting. Uh, I've got something in an Atherin blue box box. I think this is that shell he was referring to. Both of them. So we've got a Santa Fe one. Um, I think that's part of the war bonnet paint scheme. And then we've got uh, this Southern Pacific one. Uh, both look pretty nice. It looks like we might have some handrails and other things too, which is uh, good. Those types of parts can be rare because a lot of people throw them out accidentally. So I'm quite happy to uh, see that. And then he's gone and sent uh, a ton of track. And uh, I think that this track right here is steel track. However, this is definitely nickel silver. So yeah, all uh, great pieces. These could definitely come in use uh, for some future projects. So that is all uh, fantastic. I think uh, down here we've actually got some switches too. Yeah, those look to be in great shape. Got some uh, 15 radius curves. You don't find these at every hobby store I find, so uh, those are kind of a handy item to have. Of course, you have to use them you know, wisely because not all locomotives can handle a radius that tight, but uh, they are nice to have. 
Anyways, let's uh, open up uh, both these things. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is what we should open first. Okay. It's an Atherin chassis of some sort. Looks to be in mint condition, too. That's nice. Now, I think this might be an engine. I'm not 100% sure, but let's open it up and find out. So this is the Shea locomotive that uh, he was talking about. And uh, what a beautiful locomotive. It's got good weight to it. Um, it kind of looks to me like it might be a, a Bachman Spectrum, but I, I could be quite mistaken on that. I'm not 100% sure. But what a gorgeous engine. People have been asking me for such a long time if I would ever buy a Shea locomotive, and I've uh, just never found one uh, at a decent price. So for somebody to go and send one like this is just uh, incredible. It's got to be uh, yeah, maybe maybe higher quality than a Bachman Spectrum. It's got a lot of metal parts on it. Yeah, I really don't know, but what an incredible looking locomotive. I'll be uh, excited to see if uh, this thing doesn't run, if we can get it going again. Okay, so here's one of the locomotives that they mentioned. It uh, is a Mahano. I didn't know they actually included this engine in the uh, President's Choice train set. I, I knew they included a whole bunch of uh, different steam engines, all of which were very good for uh, a starter set. But uh, yeah, this is a lot more uh, modern than most of the Mahanos I work on. It looks like uh, I could use a little bit of love here and there, but uh, what a terrific engine. Absolutely fantastic. Looks like we've got some spare parts. A whole bunch of couplers, look at that. Anyways, I think these are the uh, Sioux Line locomotives, which uh, is custom building. Oh, yeah. Look at that. And uh, as you can see, this is a powered model. And the, the paintwork is just terrific. Like for uh, somebody's project, it's very crisp. Absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see what the uh, F unit looks like. Check it out. What a beauty. Well, that just looks absolutely terrific. I, I just can't believe how crisp it is. I mean, this looks like uh, factory work right here. So I'm sure we'll be able to get these uh, engines going again if they just need uh, a little bit of basic wiring. And I think he said it was only the B unit that needed some wiring. So yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. We'll have to uh, go test these out. What a uh, generous lot. I, I really can't believe somebody would uh, send all this stuff. I'm absolutely uh, blown away by all of this. And Corey, if you're watching, thank you so much for uh, so generously sending all these different things. I can't wait to work on all these different projects. And uh, the thing is too, I'm supposed to be building a layout for a uh, family friend's son. And uh, you know, I don't have too much room on my layout to add on many more track expansions, but I might be able to put a little bit of this track towards that project. So uh, yeah, I'll be uh, sure to uh, pay a little bit of this forward too. So. Thanks a bunch for that. So on to the next box here. I don't have any idea of where this one uh, comes from. It came in a while back and I removed uh, all the labels and stuff just uh, for people's privacy. Anyways, we'll find out. Hello Harrison, glad to see you've made it to 21. I wanted to try to get this to you a little early this year just to make it in time for your birthday. I wrapped up a few things I found at a train store just down in a little town called Geneseo. Hopefully I've pronounced that right, Illinois. It's a nice little place and it has been for the past couple years. I'm hoping you like the stuff I got you and as always keep up the great content from Controller Packers. P.S. I got you another Trainworks piece that you had a good first impression of the last time. I found another one that I think you'll like too. What is it? You'll have to find out. Well, that is quite intriguing. Uh, I guess I was a little late uh, unboxing this one, but uh, I'm uh, just as excited to uh, take everything out of the box here. Controller Packers has uh, sent some stuff in the past, including his father's locomotive, which we we're actually able to get uh, working on the channel again, and I sent it off to... Uh, I sent it back to him, and uh, apparently his father was thrilled. So that was uh, kind of a great moment uh, back in the day. 
But anyway, it looks like he's gone and uh, sent some gifts. So let's get these all opened up. Wow, that is a very high-end uh, Atlas piece of equipment. GNF, Great Western Railway. Well, that's uh, a road name you don't hear too often. Look at this, a whole bunch of different figures. Full figured folks, I love it. Oh no way, check this out. We've got a hot dog stand and an ice cream uh, parlor. Well, an ice cream tr uh, truck, I should say. Oh, that is so cool. This is an N-scale version of uh, the garage I have on my HO scale layout. So awesome. I didn't even know they had an N-scale version of this. Very cool. Something from AHM. Oh, this looks pretty nice. Maybe it's a 260 or uh, an 060. I'm not 100% sure, but this is a uh, an old River Rossi locomotive from Pennsylvania Railroad. It looks like it needs uh, a little bit of work, but uh, overall not a bad looking locomotive, I've got to say. Oh, some Bachman stuff. Got some sort of an intermodal and an 060. I have always wanted one of these. I've got some very similar locomotives, but uh, look at this new in the box. That is awesome. This looks to be in great shape. Maybe it wasn't even ever open before. Super cool. I wonder what the heck this is. A flex van Illinois Central car. I cannot say I've ever heard of one of those before, but it looks like a very cool piece of uh, end scale equipment and uh, from the brand he was referring to earlier. But uh, yeah, controller packers, you've uh, once again outdone yourself. I mean, just check all these things out. It's so cool. And now we've got a box from a viewer named uh, Lucas. Dear SMT Mainline, I have been watching your videos for two years. I hope you like these HO scale trains from Lucas. And he's got a picture of the uh, Wakefield train. It's the same number anyway. Anyways, there's a whole variety of uh, different things here. We've uh, got a uh, really vintage Atlas switch. A Learjet 45. A couple of uh, crossing signals and it actually looks like uh, these, o uh, these light up, so... Uh, I'd be very curious to see. Maybe they blink. Who knows? These are uh, parts for this uh, railroad crossing, which I think is by Bachman. Yes, it is. It looks almost identical to the other one that was uh, sent in. Hmm. Bachman. I wonder what this came from. That's a very unusual piece. I've never seen that before. Oh, wow, look at that. Some sort of uh, a very, uh, I don't know, maybe early 1800s uh, steam locomotive. And it does appear to be powered, too. Huh. Hmm. No idea what that is. And we've got another very vintage passenger car. And then I think this is probably the same as the other uh, two. Yes, look at that. So this is uh, super interesting. I've not seen this uh, train before. I'm uh, quite curious to see. We'll have to uh, test it out later. And finally, we've got one more uh, package here. I have no idea where this one comes from or who it comes from, but uh, as always, we will find out. Oh, I think I know what this is about. 
So basically what this is, is it's a whole variety of different lubricants and track cleaners made for model railroading. And the story behind it is that around a year ago, I was actually contacted by somebody who works at LaBelle and they were telling me that one of the people who sell their products in Ottawa, which I think would either be Larkspur Line or Hobby House, mentioned that I used some of their products in my videos. So they contacted me and uh, asked if I was willing to do a review. And I told them that uh, I was happy to do a review for them, but I'm gonna be completely honest what I think of the products. So uh, just bear that in mind. But they went ahead and uh, apparently sent them anyway. So yeah, I've got some uh, new stuff to test out, you know? We'll, uh, we'll see what they're uh, like, I'm kinda curious. So I think that's gonna be about it for the unboxing, but we've got a whole bunch of different pieces of rolling stock, locomotives, uh, figures, things like that. So why don't we take all this stuff over to the layout and uh, test all of it out? All right, so I've got everything all laid out here. There were some N-scale uh, pieces, which we're definitely gonna test out later, but for now, I think we'll just uh, go with the HO ones. We'll start off with the first locomotive here, the Athern Hustler. Now apparently this thing needs new bands, but uh, we'll give it some power and see. And I did see it move a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, there's definitely something a little off with this one, so I think we'll have to uh, open it up and maybe have a look. It's possible uh, maybe they're backwards or something. That's something that can happen and then they actually work against each other. Anyways, next off we'll test out the Shea locomotive. I, again, I have no idea if this one's gonna start or not, but uh, we'll give it some power here. I can see the motor uh, right through here and it does look to be in good shape, so that's a promising sign. But anyways, let's try it out here. And... shorting out for some reason but uh, you know the motor is definitely turning over in there yeah there we go yeah so uh, maybe that one's gonna need some work I'm also noticing too that the uh, pistons are all gone too so I'm not sure if we can put something here to maybe kind of hide that section but still a very unique locomotive and here's the Mahano engine. This one apparently does run, and I believe that these Mahano engines are very reliable. They've had a long history of that, so let's give it some power here. And it fires right up. Got it working light, too. Yeah, that runs real well. Does have a little bit of a wobble to it. Uh, it might need some fresh oil, but uh, overall a uh, fine locomotive. And now we've got the uh, Bachman locomotive, the Sioux Line engine. I'm pretty sure that this one does run. I think it's just the B unit that was uh, rewired. So anyways, we'll uh, give this one some power. Oh yeah, that runs great. What a beauty, that runs perfect. Now I don't think that this one's gonna do anything, but uh, just for kicks, we'll set it up on the track and see if it's shorted or anything like that. And uh, there's no current draw, so I don't think there are any wires going to the motor. I think that's what he meant by the rewiring. So this one's gonna need some work, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem. I think we'll get this one out. She's trying to go. Hmm, I wonder if that's important. I think this one's a, a case of a locomotive which just hasn't been run in a really long time because you can kind of hear it starting to break in. Yeah, this one's fine. What happens is when these things have been sitting for a while, uh, just a little bit of oxidization builds up on the commutator. And uh, when these things run, the brushes actually scrape that oxidization off. So everything starts to kind of clean itself and they usually start to come back to life. So that I think is what's going on here.
Well, I think we can safely call that one a runner. And uh, now we've got this whole uh, 1800 steam locomotive. Again, I have no idea if this one runs or not. It's a two-wheel drive locomotive. Very unusual. Apparently it's called uh, Pegasus too. Let's uh, try it out. That's promising. Let's give it some more power here. Yeah, there's a little bit of oxidization on there, so I think uh, all it needs is a good wheel cleaning. Really, uh, nothing too complicated. Just for kicks, why don't we uh, set it up with its whole train? Yeah, there we go. Oh, that looks very cool. Well, I take back what I said. This thing actually uh, doesn't run half bad. I'm sure a wheel cleaning would still uh, do it some good, but uh, funny enough, I think pushing these cars actually helps because uh, when the locomotive loses power, uh, these uh, keep the momentum going. So uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Now I went and got uh, this locomotive right here because I want to uh, run some of the uh, new rolling stock which was sent in. Starting off with, of course, the uh, Hershey's box car. Fantastic. That looks great. Well, what a great new train. Now there's some end scale stuff I wanna go test out. All right, so I went ahead and I just quickly got everything out of the boxes here just so you wouldn't have to watch me try to do that uh, with one hand here. Anyways, we'll start off with the Burlington 060 diesel locomotive. I don't actually know if you can call it a diesel locomotive in 060, but uh, anyways, let's uh, test this thing out here. I uh, do apologize, by the way, for the condition of my end scale layout. It is a project, but uh, I don't have enough time on my hands with all the other projects for it at the moment. Anyways, let's give this thing some power. And uh, so far, we're not seeing anything. Oh, there we go, it's moving. Come on. Well, it seems to be uh, starting to get there. I think with uh, locomotives of this size, though, the contact area is just so small, it's kind of hard for them to maintain uh, good contact with the track. Anyway, we'll get this uh, car all uh, loaded up here. Fantastic, I'm very happy with that. And yeah, now we've got the train works piece. We'll get this all set up. Hopefully we'll work on uh, this radius of track. Yeah, unfortunately it might be a little bit uh, too big for uh, this particular layout. It looks like a really cool piece of rail equipment, whatever it is, but uh, I honestly have no idea. Anyways, we've also, of course, got uh, the Union Pacific boxcar, so we'll uh, set that up and see if we can run it around. Got this uh, little Kato engine I bought about a year ago, I think. Brilliant. And finally, we've got the brand new gas station, and I think that that will look quite at home right there. The layout still needs a ton of work, but uh, I think that this has improved the value probably by like 200%. And with a little more love, it might turn into a decent layout. I'm really uh, not sure though if I wanna keep this a winter scene or turn it into more of a summer or spring scene. There are a lot of potential ideas because right now it needs to get redone. So if anybody does have ideas, uh, let me know in the comments. I, uh, I'm open to ideas to, to get this thing uh, fixed up. 
Well, folks, I think that's going to be about it for today's video. Just before we finish things off, though, I want to give a huge thanks to everybody who sent stuff in today. I want to start off with uh, Gerald Raté, who sent in the Hershey boxcar, plus all the Atherin kits. I think that those are going to make for some terrific projects, and frankly, I just can't wait to uh, watch all those beautiful Amtrak cars going around the layout, so that should be excellent. As for uh, this little locomotive, too, I think that it should be pretty easy to get going again. These things are very straightforward to work on, so thank you so much for sending all of that. The next person I want to thank is Pete Monster 62 who sent in a whole bunch of spare parts, a whole bunch of supplies, and uh, the little uh, N-Scale Union Pacific boxcar. It's all very generous stuff and I think it is going to come in very handy with some future projects, so thanks a bunch for all of that. The wrapping was a very nice touch too, so uh, I do appreciate that. The third person I want to thank is uh, Corey, who sent in a whole bunch of, uh, a lot of the locomotives that you see right here, these uh, four, and uh, as well as a whole bunch of track, supplies, parts, tons of very useful stuff, so super generous. I can't thank you enough for all of it, so thanks a bunch. Fourth person I want to thank is uh, Controller Packers, who uh, sent in that uh, wonderful Great Western boxcar, which is right here, as well as uh, the buildings and uh, locomotives. This one uh, in particular and the N-Scale one, both uh, terrific engines, so thanks a whole bunch for that. Fifth person I want to thank is Lucas, who uh, sent in this really cool, what I assume is an 1800s era train. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll, uh, I'll do some digging, find some information on this thing, and uh, hopefully we can get it running a little bit better too. It's already off to a great start, so yeah, it's very cool. He also sent in some track and other things too, so uh, thanks a bunch to uh, Lucas for that. And uh, finally, I want to thank LaBelle for sending in all those lubricants to test out. I am uh, really curious to see uh, how they make uh, different engines perform, so we'll have to try that out. But until then, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.